Essentially, during protein synthesis, we see two phases, transcription and translation. First, during transcription, the information that is provided in the DNA of an organism is transcribed into an RNA sequence. Second, during translation, the RNA sequence is translated into amino acids, which then make up the final proteins. There are quite a few steps to this whole process, but let me first explain it to you with an analogy. So it's Thanksgiving, and let's pretend that you have no idea how to cook a turkey, or anything for that matter, like me. Well, the rational thing would be to look up how to cook a turkey either online or in a recipe book. Then you write the instructions down so that you have a record for your own. After that, you call up the local supermarket to get them to deliver the ingredients for you, and once the ingredients have come, you whip up a delicious meal in your kitchen. Happy Thanksgiving! Surprisingly, protein synthesis is just like this process. Let's backtrack a little bit and go back to the very first step, looking up a recipe. The recipe book is like your DNA. It carries all the instructions and genetic material. Alright, the next thing you did was write the instructions down. In this analogy, you are playing the role of a molecule called mRNA, a type of RNA that stands for messenger RNA. In real protein synthesis, the mRNA is a transcription of the information from DNA into an RNA sequence and that information is carried to actually make the protein somewhere else. After this, we said that calling up the supermarket was next so that the delivery man would bring the ingredients. Now the delivery guy is representing yet another type of RNA called tRNA or transfer RNA. The tRNA transfers amino acids, which are the building blocks of proteins, to the protein builders of the cell called ribosomes. And can you guess what the ribosome is? It's the kitchen since you're cooking the turkey or making the protein in it. And one last type of RNA is involved in the protein synthesis process called rRNA, which stands for ribosomal RNA. These RNA units simply make up the ribosomes and facilitate the making of proteins. You can think of them as the oven or any other kitchen appliance in this analogy. Now let's go a little deeper into how protein synthesis works since the AP exam requires just a little more knowledge than the overview. So here's a recap. During transcription, mRNA is created from DNA to code a specific protein, making a complementary RNA sequence. In translation, at the ribosome, tRNA molecules bring amino acids to start building the protein. So when we look at transcription a little closer, we see that an enzyme called RNA polymerase binds to a promoter region, which is a place in the DNA where the protein information starts. By pairing the bases C with G and A with U, a complementary mRNA sequence is made. Each mRNA strand has multiple triplet bases called codons, so each codon means that the bases are read three at a time. When the mRNA is sent to the ribosome, we said that tRNA brings the amino acids to build the protein. Each tRNA molecule must find a codon to match up with, since they all carry different amino acids. From this, we can see that each specific codon matches up with a specific amino acid. For example, here's a chart of the genetic code. To read this, we say that the codon CUC codes for the amino acid leucine. And once the RNA sequence reaches a specific codon called a stop codon, such as UGA, the proton is finished synthesizing. So that's basically it for protein synthesis. I hope this video simplified at least a little bit of the whole process, and thanks for watching.